Uh, I am Sri Kumar Banerjee. Uh, I spent my entire career in the Atomic Energy Program in Bhabha Atomic Research Center and the Department of Atomic Energy in India. I held the position of uh, the Chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission and the Secretary of the Department of Atomic Energy in the last phase of my active career. Beyond that, now I am a Homi Bhabha uh, Professor in Bhabha Atomic Research Center. This is a position of uh, something like an emeritus professor and I do research on materials because my specific area is materials research and I also uh, work on um, the, the sustainability issue on the, on the energy scenario. So that is my current work and I do spend quite a bit of time in, in propagating this to different, uh, by through different uh, ways, by, mostly by lectures and that's what I do in many places. You know, sustainability is a, uh, is a word which is too often used without uh, really knowing the meaning of it. When you look at sustainability, sustainability is not in one parameter. Sustainability is human life on this planet, if you look at that way. So sustainability would require everything. You require water, you require food, you require uh, uh, you require peace and of course sustainability also will require energy because from the start of the um, industrial revolution the energy requirement for humanity is continuously increasing. Now industrial revolution happened in the west particularly in, in Europe first and later to United States at that time it was not United States but America but uh, that process started and uh, gradually there was a there was a kind of a metastable equilibrium that was set up when it was possible to sustain a quality of life in western world assuming the resources from all over the world. What happened with the information revolution with tremendous amount of information coming in, everybody in the world is now aspiring for a better life. If you now take the total 7 billion population of the world and they want to have a life if not matching but comparable to that of the west then the energy requirement is enormous because we are talking of uh, typically um, maybe something like 600 million people in the western Europe and America put together and but we have a 7 billion population so it's a tenfold increase in the number and the energy requirement, of course, you don't need tenfold increase in energy, but it's a very substantial increase. And countries like India, China, where there's a large population, see our per capita today, per capita electricity consumption is just about 800 kilowatt hour. Compare that with uh, maybe uh, Western Europe or America, typically the number in the range will be of the, of, of the order of about 12,000 kilowatt hours. So it's a, an order of magnitude higher. So since this is so much high, it is uh, in India as we see long term projection you forget, even short term. See today our uh, total capacity is something like about 220 uh, gigawatt which will go to 600 gigawatt in next 20 years time, less than 20 years time. So three fold increase. So now this three fold increase in energy uh, would definitely strain the system in a way that because it will be mainly by burning carbon. Coal we have, but our coal is very poor quality. We have to import a lot of coal. So our import bill for coal will go up. Our import bill for the crude oil is also very high. The whole Indian economy is essentially controlled by how much is our import bill for oil. In another 20 years, coal also will take the same place. So this will be a very severe strain. So for energy balance, so we and obviously we want to reduce the carbon footprint. For reduction of carbon footprint, we must now employ the primary energy sources that is both the renewables like solar and wind and nuclear. Why we need both? The next question may come. We need both because all said and done, solar and wind are very nice energy form, distributed form. Our population is also distributed, we require that, but it cannot really support the base load. 
you need also, we, we, we also have a tremendous amount of urbanization. People don't realize that what's the kind of percentage of people who are moving from the agriculture to the uh, uh, to small cities, big cities, and so it's a large scale urbanization. And large scale urbanization for a people of 1.25 billion people. So it's a big factor. So you need to provide that energy in the urban centers. You need the energy for the industry. So this is where the nuclear part comes. So you have a base load, you have the variable load which is coming from the solar and wind. This kind of a combination essentially will solve this issue of uh, lowering the carbon footprint at the same time meeting the aspiration of the people. But it is a very big challenge, it is not an easy thing. So that is our challenge in energy. Similar challenge is there for food, similar challenge is there for water. Imagine providing water, potable water is a very big challenge for a country like this. So, sustainability you have to take care of all these factors and overall peace because without the sustainability is not there. See the solar part, uh, one of the obstacle in solar part is that we have to expand both solar thermal and solar photovoltaic. Solar photovoltaic it is when you think of a in, in, in small terms, it is easy you see that oh you put some solar panels who will provide you the solar panel, then to go for that, who produces that much of silicon. See India does not produce silicon even today. So there has been and these things take time to set up in industry, not that the solar tech, the making this, uh, uh, this solar uh, high purity solar material is, is, a, is a big obstacle. That I think is not a big obstacle, obstacle is that to set up that industry, today if you want to set up an industry it is not profitable. Because solar plants, uh, solar uh, panel plants are there elsewhere, which have been set up maybe 20 years back at a much reduced capital cost. So today making it and competing with that is difficult. So it is not a commercially competitive process where you can make it, but you need it. You, you need solar panels of that larger uh, quantity. People are talking that every rooftop let us be covered with solar panel. Good idea. So that is one problem in, in solar I said. But solar thermal, solar thermal has a good, good potential. Today it is not competitive. So if you just take the commercial competitiveness, then it is a, it's a difficult game. Because it, it will become, now unless we are, we are at that point of a disaster point, then only people start thinking that what to do. So little prior planning and then we have to see that how to make a solar, solar thermal an effective way of producing large scale energy. There are technology challenges in storage. If it is possible to do the storage, but it is not again very easy. If you store it by any chemical means, you are actually not reducing the, the, the problem of uh, resources in the world. But any chemical means, what is that? You, what is in a, in a battery? Basically in a battery, you take some material, a metal, you keep, get it in the metal form and that metal goes, goes into some compound form and that energy comes out, it is a chemical energy. To produce that metal of the first place, it's, you have to spend that same energy. So if you look at the total energy scenario, the battery concept will never be able to solve large scale uh, um, energy de deployment. There are other means that you lift water at a higher elevation. So you use that gravitation and that is possible. There are different ways, but this has to also come to a stage that the intermittency problem of solar and wind is addressed. So there is a big technological challenge on that. I am also a strong believer in a sense that there may be very low efficiency uh, like your organic semiconductors or organic solar cells, efficiencies will be low. Engineers always think of the best efficiency. Nature does not believe in that. In nature most of the things are done at a very poor efficiency. Photo, the, 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 uh, uh, the leaves convert solar energy into that energy efficiency is as low as 1%. But it is plenty. So that is why you need to also think of that even low efficiency but massive deployment may be able to um, solve this problem to an extent. This is one side of the distributed form of energy. Parallel side is the nuclear. Nuclear also requires, see today if you just compare nuclear, nuclear in our country, the nuclear power plants are competing with the same generation thermal power stations. 
we should not compare one plant of today and one plant set up 10 years back. Same generation plant, you compare a thermal and nuclear, located at the same location, locational advantage is also not that they are competing. Nuclear is sometimes cheaper. It's good in that sense. But when we think of a large scale deployment, one of course our issue is that one is the way to get uranium from outside. With our own uranium, we will not be able to expand the thing very fast in the, in the near future. I am just talking of the near future. First, later on, multiplying by fast reactor, multiplying by just now I mentioned about the molten salt reactor, it will be possible. But that will take time, that is not in 20 years. In 20 year time frame, our target is that can we grow up to from present level is about only 6 gigawatt, from 6 gigawatt to 60 gigawatt. Now, they may say that you are multiplying by 10 times, but you know our total power capacity will go from present 200 gigawatt to 600 gigawatt. So, when we go to 600 gigawatt, 60 gigawatt will be 10 percent. So, it is not a very large increase in that sense. From present level of nearly 2 percent, we will go to 10 percent. That is our ambition. And if you can do that, I think we will make a foundation ready. With that foundation, we can then really do a uh, the frog leap. But you need a foundation. Without that, today that foundation itself is not there. It is so low. So, we need from this 2 percent to about 10 percent in next 20 years. Thorium energy, I do not think in 10 years you will find a huge amount of contribution coming from thorium energy. But it is sad that the, the technology of thorium is something which is actually a proven technology. But if you ask any common person, if you ask even very uh, well informed academicians, many of them will say that no, it is something which is uh, sort of again with some quotes unquote uh, uncertainties, we do not know what will happen and that sort of a thing. And it remained like that. I actually admire our predecessors. 50 years back, when they could visualize, at that time the energy crisis was not there. In spite of the fact, in that background also, they could realize that one day there will be such a problem of energy crisis, they did not even know at that time that uh, energy crisis would be linked with the environmental degradation. So, 50 years back, you see the same person, I am just give, give some names, our Baba is one of them, Lewis was another thing, so, many people. Weinberg, why did the tip take up and why did they really uh, consistently serve for that purpose? We should not do the same way, but it is a proven thing. Now, it is for, for the thorium community to give that emphasis that it is something which should be done just right away, not any delay. It does not mean that in 10 years time, you will be producing a huge lot of energy. It is not like again setting up a um, 100 gigawatt solar uh, plant, that can be done. If you decide that I want to set up 100 gigawatt, you need to make these panels more and more and set up it in many places. It is not that easy, but we have to focus attention on the thorium technology in every aspect, in the material aspect, in the reactor design aspect, reactor concept. There are various reactor concepts, that is what I was telling you, know, there are many options and we should try each of the option but we can very soon focus on something and that way I would say the molten salt is a, is a possibility like that. It is a proven again. It is not that you are doing the experiment for the first time. 